So it's come to my attention that a lot of you have been requesting me to do a Floyd Mayweather film study akin to my Manny Pacquiao film study. Now if you've been following my videos for a while, you may have noticed that I use examples of Floyd in a lot of my videos, and I just want to say that I never really had the intention of making a Mayweather film study, simply because everything I would have to talk about is already in Wilson Caden's Floyd Mayweather film study. Now I've left the link in the description for those who want to check it out. There's not really anything I could possibly add to it, so that's why I didn't really feel the need to make another one. And so that's why instead, I'm going to be making this a beginner's guide for those who want to copy Floyd Mayweather's boxing style. I hope you learned something in the process and enjoy the video. One last thing I also want to add, this is Floyd Mayweather's style as I understand it through studying him over the years. The concepts I'm going to be showing are only concepts based on what I and many others have observed of Floyd. It may not be exactly what's going on in his head when he does these things, so just keep in mind that a lot of these concepts are open to interpretation before trying these in sparring or in a fight. And that said, I also want to add that just because Mayweather does these things at the highest levels of boxing doesn't mean a beginner can't or shouldn't try to emulate him. I believe it's foolish to treat any technique as advanced only techniques in boxing, given that you're smart enough to eventually learn these techniques. It's never too early to start practicing them with the right sparring partners. I implemented and emulated Floyd's style as I understood him early on when I started boxing and it made me leaps and bounds better of a boxer almost instantly. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is Floyd Mayweather's stance, which is the Philly shell. And this is where Floyd's right hand is held high at his chin and is used to block left hooks and to parry jabs coming from the orthodox fighter. His left shoulder is protecting his chin, which is tucked down behind his shoulder. His stance is not squared up in relation to his opponent, and this is so that his shoulder could be in good position to block straight right hands. And then what you see here in his left hand is held down at his waist so that his entire arm could be used to block body shots, and so that he could raise his shoulder much more easily to roll punches. So you might be asking, what about the side of the head above his shoulder? Surely you could just throw a right hook at the completely exposed area over his lead shoulder. The shoulder only covers his chin, so just don't aim for his chin, right? I know I wondered the same thing for years before I tried this myself. So let's talk about that right hook. Now I just want to preface this by saying that there's no such thing as a foolproof defense. That's what's so beautiful about boxing. There's always an opening somewhere at all times, and this is the opening you sacrifice for using the Philly shell. Now if you happen to see that right hook coming over your shoulder, you can pull away from it by leaning back onto your back foot, which would result in you bringing your shoulder high enough to deflect the right hook. You could try this yourself. If you stand up, if you stand up and lean your head towards either one of your feet, you naturally find your shoulder rise on the opposite side that you're leaning towards. So leaning back can allow you to still be able to shoulder roll the shot or just dodge it entirely given your feet are properly placed and you have enough distance. And this is something I'm gonna come back to in a second to explain in better detail. And of course, the easiest and most effective answer to that right hook, if you think they're too close to you to pull away from it, is to simply just bend down at the waist towards the right if you're orthodox and towards the left if you're a southpaw. And Floyd bends down at the waist very often to dodge punches. He doesn't just sit there in his shell. Suddenly, Filibendo is much more in the fight. Don't want to see him knocked out, but it looks as though Mayweather could well do that. Take him time to adjust. Well, he's answered that. Notice how Floyd's always holding the phone and keeping his right hand high. He uses that to parry the jab and is going to block the left hook. He rolls the, sh the straight right hand with his shoulder and then he uses his right arm to block the uh, the left hook to the body. And you see him there, it bends down at the waist. He doesn't have to see the punch coming. He could bend down to dodge either hook. And you see him here switch between blocking left hooks with his right hand and deflecting the right hook with his shoulder. And here against Marquez, you're going to see him once again block the left hooks with his right hand and deflect the right hand with his shoulder. See, if you use the Philly shell, you have to be moving around to roll with the shots. You can't just sit there like you can with a high guard. There you see him again using his right hand to deflect the left hooks. 
The Philly Shell defense requires you to roll with the punches and just your guard to properly defend against them. If you get and anticipate which punches your opponent will throw in combinations, you'll find the Philly Shell to be a very efficient defense to use. We've just seen Floyd bend at the waist a number of times. I personally like to bend at the waist after blocking two punches, and this is because usually the third punch in a combination is a hook. Not all the time, but a lot of the times it is. So usually if they throw a 1-2, I'll uh, parry the jab, shoulder roll the right hand, and then bend out the waist uh, just because I don't like to leave it up to chance. Either bend down at the waist or move my feet. That way, if I can't anticipate the third punch, I just don't even leave it up to chance. So let's go back to the proper foot positioning I was talking about earlier. The lead foot establishes your position in relation to your opponent and should always be pointed at the central mass of your opponent. Notice Floyd's lead foot is pointing at the central mass of Canelo Alvarez. His rear foot is positioned where it's not too square and not too sideways in relation to Canelo, giving him a properly balanced boxing stance. He could throw any punch with his feet positioned this way, and he could defend against punches because his central line is minimally exposed. If his rear foot was positioned in the green circle you see here, he wouldn't be able to properly throw a left hook or a straight right hand. He would be easily pushed off balance by left hooks. If his rear foot was positioned in the red circle you see here, he would be completely squared up to Canelo, and his center line would be completely exposed. And this is the problem you see with a lot of people in the streets trying to imitate Floyd. You wouldn't be able to pull your head away anymore from punches if you're squared up this way because you would essentially be doing the limbo and have no balance. And what do I mean by proper balance? If you were to draw a straight line between your feet and if your head is directly above any point on that line, you should in theory be balanced. You see the vertical lines here above Floyd's feet show the range in which Floyd can position his head and remain balanced if his foot position doesn't change. And you see clearly his head is in between that range so he is balanced in this position. And here we take a look at a picture of the real Ron Suno. His um, information is above and below. You could go check him out if you want. And his leaning back. And I know this is a joke and a, quite a funny joke, but this is something that's quite relatable. And you actually see this in real life when people are fighting. But you notice how when he's leaning back, his head is not positioned on the line between his feet. So he's clearly in no balance. He's essentially doing the limbo and... He could even fall off without even you trying to punch him. He could fall backwards and this is just not a good position because he has no balance and he has to pull back in order to have any balance. Marquez can't cope at the moment. It just looks like he wants to dig the shots in, spreads the feet, there's the right hand. Just a jab to the body of Marquez, stopped him in a right hand. is just dominating him at the moment. Just kind of treating him with disdain. And his hand and his physical strength are just still amazing me. And Shane is looking old to me. The Floyd Mayweather pull counter is a move we've seen him pull off over and over and over and over again, so much so that I would consider this his signature move. And Floyd isn't the originator of the pull counter, but I'd definitely say he's the most prolific user of it, which is why many people today know it as the Floyd Mayweather pull counter. So if you're looking to emulate Floyd's boxing style, this is something you should have down, and I'm going to break down the mechanics of it for you. Jesse Ravello was an Olympic coach. Down goes Veja on a right hand over the top by Mayweather. Okay, so I've seen a lot of people break down this move as simply Floyd using his quick reflexes to pull away from his opponent's punch and come back with a right hand over the top. And that explanation helps nobody who actually wants to learn how to do the pull counter. Conversely, there's also a lot of videos out there that do break this move down very well. So you won't be finding anything new in my explanation, but I'll go ahead and do so anyway. Now I've drawn this on the picture to illustrate the basic setup of the pull counter. Because a good counter puncher sets up his counters, and most counters you see are the result of baiting out a specific punch and pulling the trigger when it comes. You don't need great reflexes to be an excellent counter puncher. And so the green line represents Floyd's lead foot. The yellow line is the position of his gloves, and the red line is the position of his head. Notice how these three lines are almost right on top of each other. They're all pretty much lined up together. This is because Floyd is leaning in right over his lead foot. Most importantly, 
The purple line represents the position of his rear foot, and the blue line is where his head would be if he wasn't leaning forward. You see, this isn't Floyd's normal stance, because he, this would be a horrible stance to try to protect yourself in. He's leaning in, making himself appear open, and that is entirely the point. He's deceiving Maidana with the illusion that he's closer than he actually is. Remember when I said your head needs to be in between your feet in order for you to be balanced? Well, look at the huge diff distance between the green line representing Floyd's lead foot and the purple line for his rear foot. That means he could pull back all the way to the purple line and still be balanced, ready to counter. You see, if Floyd's head were at the blue line, there's no way Maidana would reach him with a punch. But that also means that Maidana wouldn't throw a punch. And that in turn means that there's no punch for Floyd to counter. So he leans in to make it look like he's in punching range, but he's really not because the distance between two fighters is the distance between the two fighters' lead foot, not the head. That's because a fighter can change his head position without moving his foot position. So with the pull counter being designed to counter the orthodox jab, you should set it up at maximum distance because the jab is the longest, quickest punch. So when you see your opponent move, you should expect it to be a jab, because that's exactly what you're open for. You should also hold your hands low like Floyd is doing here, to further bait out a jab to the head. So you don't need great reflexes when you can anticipate your opponent to do the very thing you want them to do. So then you see the jab come from Maidana, and Floyd pulls back away from it, but you notice that he also kicks his rear foot back for additional balance so that he could come back with the right hand even quicker. But you also notice here that Floyd actually changes his head slot to the inside so he kind of slips to the inside as well as pulls back from it. And this is because this, by slipping his head to the inside it brings his right hand better in line to shoot it at Maidana or Maidana's head. Because you, you see, uh, if you stand up and demonstrate your, this yourself, if you move your head to the inside or to the direction that Floyd is moving it, if you, you see if you move it to the left, naturally you find your right shoulder starts to move closer to the front or closer to your opponent. And that allows him to shoot the right hand here which you see here is going to come back quickly with the right hand. And that's because he has his rear foot to push off of because you see he's still in balance. So now you might be thinking, great, now I could use the Philly shell and the pull counter. Now I'm in mini Floyd Mayweather, but not quite yet. See, this is one of the most important skills that Mayweather does better than anyone else with this style, controlling the space with his lead hand. See how he's been extending his lead hand at varying speeds at Miguel Cotto? These aren't full jabs. There's no intention to do damage with these probing jabs because that's exactly what they are, probes. He's controlling the space between himself and Kodo to set up a possible punch. And this also prevents Kodo from controlling that space. He's essentially doing this as a measuring device as well. If Kodo comes any closer, he could step back at an angle and remain defensively responsible. See how he's just sticking out his lead hand and is just controlling the space. And there you see Kodo steps in and he knows to step back. Or Floyd knows to step back to prevent Kodo from landing a punch. And see, he's going to stick out his lead hand again, which measures for his right hand. And he throws the right hand and then ducks under to remain defensively responsible. He smothers Kodo, preventing Kodo from getting a counter shot. Because Floyd knows that he must control Kodo so that he doesn't capitalize on his mistakes. Watch how Mayweather uses his lead hand to control Canelo Alvarez in these sequences. Notice how he uses his lead hand and sticks it right in between Canelo Alvarez's gloves. Canelo is in a high guard, which means his only vision is between his two gloves, which are held high. And so if Mayweather sticks his glove, his lead hand right in between those, those gloves, right in between Canelo Alvarez's gloves, then Canelo won't be able to see. So it's temporarily blinding Canelo with his lead hand so that he could find an opening. Notice how he sticks his lead hand and then shoots his right hand around, or he sticks his lead hand between the gloves and then shoots a jab to the body, and there you see an uppercut as well. He's not using his lead hand 
to do any damage or to land the jab is just using it to control Canelo so that Canelo can't control the space himself. And it, this keeps Canelo in that high guard and it keeps him stuck in that position so that Floyd can find an opening. Speaking of Floyd's lead hand, let's talk about Floyd's jab, or more specifically, his not-so-secret weapon, the jab to the body. The jab is the most important punch in boxing, but the jab to the body is especially useful because it's an easy way to score points and adds insurance to wearing your opponent down for the later rounds. Look at Floyd's technique here. Notice how he steps forward and shoots the jab right into the solar plexus of Miguel Cotto. This acts to suck the wind out of Cotto and keep him at bay. Notice how Floyd isn't shooting down at Cotto's body, leaving his head open to be countered. As Floyd steps in, he lowers his level so that his jab is being shot in a straight line. He simultaneously slips his head to the outside as a built-in defense in case Cotto tried to time him with a jab of his own. Look how Floyd steps over to his left as he sh shoots the jab to the head. And then watch as he shoots the jab to the body. He first does a quick feint over to the head and look at Kodo's reaction to it. Kodo covers up to his head, meaning he was expecting a jab to his head. But Floyd's little feint tricked him so that he could shoot down to the body and suck the wind out of him right at the solar plexus. See that little feint is what makes Floyd's jab to the body so effective. It's because when you don't expect it, those are the jabs or the punches that hurt you the most. And this is what you must do if you want to copy Floyd Mayweather. Now I'm going to go over what I like to call the Floyd Mayweather triple threat. When Floyd crouches down like he's setting up a pull counter, he's often also looking to attack. And he uses this stance to mask one of three common attacks you see from him. And since he mixes up these three attacks so well from this stance, he doesn't allow his opponents to get a read on what he'll do from this stance. And those three attacks are the jab to the body, a leaping left hook to the head, and a lead straight right hand to the head. And I also want to add to don't try this while you're in punching range. Since Floyd's hands are down at his waist, he would be in danger of pretty much anything Ricky Hatton could possibly throw. Just make sure you do this either at a distance or when you know your opponent is on the defense. Watch Floyd Mayweather crouch down here and then quickly shoots the jab to the solar plexus of Ricky Hatton, quickly steps it back out of range, out of danger. Watch again here, Floyd's in the crouch stance and he shoots a right hand, but look at Ricky Hatton's reaction to the right hand. Look at what he does, he drops his guard, and why would he be dropping his guard there? It's because he was hit with a jab to the body, and so when he sees Floyd crouch down into that stance, he's expecting the jab to the body, but then Floyd mixes it up and changes it to a right hand, a straight right hand to the head. And that's why Ricky Hatton drops his hands. Because when he's expecting a jab to the body, he leaves his head open. And this is what Floyd does to mix up and confuse his opponents. Shoots the jab to the body, or he could shoot the straight right to the head. And of course the third option Floyd mixes in from the stance is the leaping left hook. Watch how once again he crouches down and it looks like he's going to jab to the body. Furthermore, he also makes it look like he's about to shoot a straight right hand to the head. And once again, look how Marquez reacts to this. He drops his right hand as if he's expecting a jab to the body and is reaching out with his left hand to parry Floyd's straight right to the head. And the most incredible part is that at the very last second, Floyd changes to a left hook at the only opening Marquez isn't defending. This is absolutely genius and must have been practiced countless times. Watch how Floyd even changes his head slots to the le left mid-punch. He gets his head off of the center line as he punches, and this is defensive responsibility. He's leaving Marquez constantly confused as to what punch he'll throw from the stance, and he remains defensively responsible just in case Marquez somehow saw this coming and threw a counter. 
And last but not least, if you want to imitate Floyd Mayweather, you need to take a look at how his footwork and non-rhythmic movement brings his offense and defense together. Notice how Floyd doesn't bounce around gaining a rhythm. A lot of fighters will do a rhythmic bounce or move their head in order to build a rhythm. While building a rhythm is good to get your offense going, the problem with it is that your opponent can get a feel for the rhythm you're moving at and time you with a counter. I always say that boxing is a tactical sport. You could do things that could be considered fundamentally good in theory, but those same things can be your downfall if your opponent has a strategy against it. Now look at how Floyd moves side to side and non-rhythmically feints in and out. This keeps his opponents from getting a feel for his timing and the movement forces his opponents to follow him so that they can't set their feet for a punch. Now this is very tiring to do, I know from experience, but if you can practice bo moving both rhythmically and non-rhythmically, then you're well on your way to being a Floyd Mayweather imitation. And Floyd uses his footwork to step back when his opponents do set up for a punch. When they step in, he'll usually step back in order to create the distance in order for a, to set up a counter punch. You see there, he tries to counter Maidana. It misses, but this is a good attempt. You notice Floyd doesn't get caught by a setup from Maidana. You must be able to step back to remove yourself from the situation that your opponent is setting up. And this allows you to set up a counter because a counter punch or a punch in general starts at the feet. And if you rem remove yourself from the situation, then you'll be able to create the distance needed for a counter. Okay, this video is getting pretty long, so I'm going to end it here. And I just want to say that I've only scratched the surface on what makes Floyd Mayweather's style his own. In order for me to fully break down his skills, I would need to make a part 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on to this video. And unless you're some kind of boxing genius, you probably won't try these things I've shown and instantly do them the way Floyd does. I also want to add that beyond all of the examples I've displayed here, the number one component of Floyd's success is his fight IQ. Until you have a fight IQ close to his level, then we're all just a bunch of discount Floyds. As always, thank you everybody for watching. If you like my content and want to see more, please click the red button and subscribe. And if you want to see me cover Floyd Mayweather more, uh, please leave a comment and let me know. Otherwise, leave a like, comment, share this video around with everybody who you think would enjoy this video. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. Thank you everyone for watching.